Hello everyone, good morning, Paul Tranny here, diving into my daily creative challenge. It's my first one, day one of my first daily creative challenge. I'm excited, you should be excited as well. Vivi, Dave, Susan, Austin, Sean, this is gonna be awesome. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun broadcasting here from beautiful San Francisco. It's a beautiful, gorgeous, sunny day out there. Why not, huh? Actually, it's a sunny day in here because we get to dive into Photoshop. So we get to make it what we want. So good to have you here, Sam, Beatrice. Uh, let's get this party started. Let's just kind of dive into this real fast. You can see on my screen, this is what we're dealing with, the Daily Creative Challenge, Behance.net Challenge. It's the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Uh, build out your Photoshop skills in just nine challenges, right? Today, we're gonna do some photo editing, but it gets just, just cooler and cooler as we go along through all these days, okay? In fact, I wanna go ahead and give you a sneak peek right here. This is kind of the idea of uh, what we'll be building out. And we're gonna have variations of this, but my goal is to inspire and empower you. Just get inspired by artwork and empowered by learning Photoshop, specifically today, photo editing, okay? So feel free, uh, sign up, join the community chat right here, which is done over here in Discord. You can see it right here. Uh, we could review the current challenge, but this is day one, so there's nothing in here. I'm just ready to get this party started, right? And feel free, post your challenges there. Don't do like I'm doing, just posting a random comment, but let's continue that conversation uh, as we go along using Discord, okay? So that's the plan. Uh, you'll receive uh, a challenge each day, get involved in chat, see what that challenge is. Right now you should be watching this video, quite frankly, but if we click get started, this is the starting it, the starter file that we'll be dealing with, right? Since it's all about photo editing, I'd, uh, yeah, see it pop up right here. Right here, challenge one. We're dealing with, you guessed it, a photo of me since Man, this is, this is gonna need a lot of work. So much work, but this is literally, just took a picture of myself. We all have photos like this. How can we clean this up? And how can we make it awesome quickly? So that's the goal. Uh, if it is your first time uh, getting involved with the Daily Creative Challenge, uh, feel free to say something in chat. I would be right now typing in because it's my first time I'm hosting. All right, so here's a typical situation. We have a photo. We're looking, you have an ugly day, right? Just having an ugly day. That This photo needs to be cleaned up in many ways. We're gonna do some uh, global image adjustments and then some local image adjustments, all right? So that's the plan, okay? And our goal is to make something kind of like, if we take a look at something ultimately like this, cleaned up with some effects, okay? So in order to get there, we first have to clean up this photo, okay? Feel free, download this photo of me. If you don't have one of yourself, I encourage you to use a photo of yourself, but you can always use this one, okay? Uh, we'll start out right over here. We can see this background, this layer is locked. A lot of times people will duplicate layers just to um, have a backup, right? And you can do that by pressing this button right down here with that layer selected. You can add a layer like that and um, if you hold, all you need to do is grab this image and that specific layer and drop it over the top of this plus button that will duplicate it. A lot of people do Command J or Control J if you're on a PC and that will jump the layer. So we now have a duplicate of it. All right. <laughs> oh, Tim, Tim is my best friend. The secret is good lighting. If we could talk about lighting and, and photos and all, all that all day long, but since I didn't have good lighting with this, how can we clean this up? Your first intention is to go to image, go down to adjustments and use these. Anytime you use something under image adjustments, usually these are gonna be destructive. So if you're like, hey, you know what? I need to increase the brightness and contrast, right? You'll brighten it up, add some contrast. That's destructive, I can't go back, right? I just destroyed uh, some of the pixels and I can't roll it back, right? So that's one thing we don't wanna do, okay? There are a couple things in here that I do wanna do actually under image adjustments. 
that I'm gonna get to later. Cause there's a reason there's a divide line right here, but check it out. We'd see all these, we're like, oh, that's everything I wanna do. Can't, that means I can't do that. No, it just means we need to actually, and I'll pull this layers panel out. I would typically jump in here and right over here. Remember we duplicated this layer. If we click right here, adjustment layers, that's what we're gonna add. We could see there's our brightness and contrast, right? There's our levels, right? And I personally like giving people easy buttons, right? So I'm thinking, okay, levels. So what I wanna do, I need to level it out, make the brights a little brighter, the darks maybe a little bit darker if they're washed out. I get this properties panel off to the side, right? I said easy button, I see that auto button. So I click auto and then automatically brights, brightens it up. It also gives me this adjustment layer too that I can turn on and off. And guess what? I can adjust this some more, but the thing is, is this is not destructive. So easily what we're gonna be using over the next nine days are lots of adjustment layers. This is super powerful. This is a global adjustment that we just made. Now we brighten it up. Yeah, we can see how ugly I am. Oh, we, this image needs help. What? It needs help, right? Okay, let's take a look at this. We all have them. You have bad, bad skin days, right? Let's just go ahead and fix this quickly. <laughs> your first, first tool over here, right over here off to the side, uh, are all your healing, your healing tools, a lot of your content aware tools. And we're gonna start with spot healing brush tool. That's our default, okay? Um, I'm not gonna, good question. I get to see a question about resizing it. We, we don't, uh, uh, yeah, if you want to resize, resizing is always something I honestly do last because we want to work at the maximum resolution. You're going to do that under image and then image size. That's the last thing we're going to do. Oh, Richard, you are funny. One way to solve this problem is just use a paper bag. <laughs> All right. So if we're using the spot healing brush, it will clean up that one spot, right? As I click around, that will work, right? As I do this, I'm actually working on this layer and it is destructive. And then we actually don't want to do that, right? We actually want to just get rid of that altogether. We want to make a new layer by clicking that plus button and we want to work on a layer on top. And notice how if I have a tool selected right up here, just go ahead and sample all layers, right? And also make sure content aware is selected. We could talk about these other two Nine times out of 10, you're gonna use content aware, right? And you're gonna have sample all layers selected, okay? We also wanna control the brush size right up here. This goes for all the tools, right? We're gonna click and drag to adjust the size uh, and the hardness as well. So we can see, let me kind of zoom in on this. We can see down here, it's super soft, super hard. I'll keep this kind of in the middle and then I can adjust the size. As you know, as Tim knows, Ken, you probably know this, Octavia as well. As I take a look over here, I'm using my um, closing bracket key and that will resize my brush. I can hold now the shift key and that will adjust the hardness. So the shift, open bracket, close bracket, changes the size and uh, the shift does the, um, the hardness basically, right? So we got that down. All right. Blank layer, perfect. Racim's got it. I'm gonna go ahead and dive into this. Clicking right there. We could see right over here, it adds this little spot. Uh, pro tip for those of you who are not doing this, if I go into the layer options, go down to panel options, I wanna make sure that I'm seeing the layer bounds. Uh, that means I'm actually able to see what I'm painting over here in this little thumbnail. Uh, if it's set to entire document, I'm not gonna be able to see what I just painted. I'm like, I have no idea what's here. That's why I say go into these options, panel options, layer bounds, just like that, okay? Click okay, and now we can start to work on this. Okay, I'm clicking around. Oh, needs help, needs help, needs help. Help me. Now, what am I actually repairing here, right? I'm, I'm fixing things that are gonna be gone in like a week, right? Uh, which 
are like blemishes, right? Little blemishes that are like, are in different stages of either coming or going, it seems like. Uh, I would never get rid of this scar because that's obviously part of me. I've had it since I was two years old, fell down some porch steps, not an exciting story, but we want to keep those elements. Now let's take a look. You ready, Abajit, about this? Justin, you ready for this? We get a lot of shine. I know I'm like super shiny just cause like I live in Colorado and it's very dry. <laughs> so I use a lot of moisturizer, but I actually want to just kind of darken these lighter areas, right? I could come in here and just replace all of those pixels. But what you wanna do is up here in the options bar, you wanna change this to whatever you wanna do. You either wanna do darken or lighten. So I wanna darken this area, boom, right? Now when I come over here, it's just gonna make that area darker and it's gonna leave the medium tone pixels alone, right? So that's all I'm doing. I usually also like to do a little bit larger strokes when I do some of this. Get in there, it's gonna make it look a little smoother. We have the same issue right up here with this highlight, right? What do we do? Change it to darken. We can paint over that, right? We can see that go away and I'm looking a little better. So I can get rid of any of the shine that uh, I don't care much for pretty easily, right? Uh, Thank you, Nora, you brought up a good point. You don't, I don't like it when skin is over edited or over, over edited in, uh, in Photoshop as well. That's why we need to just be very conservative when we do these touch-ups. And it's why we wanna have this all on the separate layer, which is all of our um, touch-up. Our local touch-ups is what we're doing, right? Before, after, looks a little better. Okay, you ready for this? Yes, Kara Sykes, for shine, things like that. Just change this to darken. If you're getting rid of light, uh, if you wanna make an area darker, select darker. If you wanna make an area lighter, select light, lighten. Um, let's take a look at these bags under the eyes, right? A lot of people will do this, by the way. We'll go in, select the patch tool, right? And again, I'll do Command J just to jump that layer. They'll select this, and then they'll like use the patch tool to say, hey, you know, fill this area with this area over here, right? Boom. And let's do this. Actually, let's. First of all, there are a couple problems with this. One, it's destructive. I actually have to do it on a separate layer, right? Zoop. That might work um, if this is for a friend and you just need to get something up ASAP, right? Who am I to judge? That doesn't look that natural, right? Um, a lot of people will do this. This is kind of what I'm showing people usually do is they'll take this and then they'll, with the patch tool, they'll take that transparency down. That might work to a degree, but again, you're, you're kind of washing out all those pixels, all the highlights, and it doesn't work, look as natural, especially if you're getting it printed, like someone was talking about, okay? This does look better. I'm gonna show you a better way. So this is kind of a little bit more like a pro tip. So that's why I'm gonna get into it now, okay? <laughs> Let's turn, uh, let's turn that off. Okay, remember we use levels to brighten up the whole image. Now I'm gonna dive into curves and I'm gonna use curves to brighten up the dark circles in my eyes. You ready for this? We're gonna go beyond patch, so this is gonna be fun. All right, it's down here. Let's add curves. Curves allows me to control the brightness, uh, lightness and the darkness of multiple channels, which is nice, right? Key thing we wanna do here is we don't wanna be working on this um, uh, layer mask. We wanna click on the curves itself, okay? And we need to now define the dark point. Let's go right over here. We're gonna select that dark point, the black point, right? I'm gonna double click on this. And this is where I pick that shadow color, that dark color right in here. And I'll click a couple times, just kind of get a sort of an average. I could always change the sample size of this eyedropper, but this is the dark area that I want to get rid of, the target shadow color. Click OK. Uh, no. And now I can go ahead. Oh, hold on. Actually, this is what I want to do. I actually want to select this. Sorry about that. I got I had this backwards. I want to select the area that I want to. Um, 
replace that dark area. So it's actually gonna be over here off to the side. That's what I wanna start with. I'm selecting the new shadow color. Click okay. And then I can go in here and click this dark area. And it gives that color um, sort of an overcast on this entire photo. And now I just want to invert this layer mask. I, so I basically hid everything. And now I wanna paint. I know we're getting into layer masks. We'll get more into this tomorrow. Um, but right in here, basically, I'm going to reveal what's on the curves layer by painting with white, right? So right over here, we'll just start painting lightly. It's just gonna start affecting that darker area that was sampled earlier, and I can start to brighten up these eyes. Typically, I'll have uh, two curves, one for each eye, but I'm actually just getting rid of that, those dark circles without um, getting rid of the lines, because I still want to keep the structure of the face. Yes, Justin Hawks knows what I'm talking about. I mix those two up as well. You, for, you have to sample the color that you want, and then the color you want to get rid of is how you do it. Okay, so that's what you wanna do. Keeps the structure of the eye, keeps those lines in there. That's part of me, right? I don't want to mess with it too much. But let's get into this a little bit more because my eyes are just, just kind of dim and dingy. They need to pop. Everybody's eyes need to pop, especially in photos. All right. Next up in photo retouching, you could use whichever one you want. We have brightness and contrast levels, curves, exposure. Pick your favorite. Since this is only day one, I'm actually gonna use levels, okay? Selecting levels. Levels gives me like an overall view of the brightness of this photo, right? With levels, I can come up here and I can grab this light point and drag it over, right? It's brightening up everything. That's okay. Because basically I'm gonna do the same thing I just did, right? We want this lighting to just be constrained to the eyes. So what do we do? We invert it, command I, if you're on a Mac, control I if you're on a PC, hides everything. Now I can paint with white on that layer to brighten up the eyes, right? Like so, right? Just brightening them up a little bit and that helps out so much, right? Look at that, just a little, right? Thank you to whoever said to not overwork a photo. And that's why I'm working on all these layers. So I can come here and turn on and off layers all day long, okay? Let's talk about a couple other things. What's up, Robzilla? How you doing, buddy? The man that needs no touch-up because he's perfect as is. Let's dive into this. Check this out. I've actually been using these tools. These, a lot of these content aware tools up here Spot healing brush, we could work on a separate layers, separate layer. Some of these, as you get into it, dodge, burn, sponge, these are gonna be destructive. Sometimes you actually do need to use them. Um, I'm, I'm actually okay using destructive because I just don't, I, sometimes I know I'm, I don't need to bring back the red in my eyes. But just to show you what some of these tools do, I can go into the sponge tool, change this to desaturate for the sponge tool. We'll go over here, because sometimes with the eyes, and again, I could use different uh, adjustment layers, but just with this background layer selected over here, I'll come in here and I'll use desaturate just to get rid of a little bit of that red, okay? So before, after. Super subtle, but I think it's really helpful. Just get rid of a touch of that red. We can actually take that flow down and just kind of very strategically get rid of some of that color right there. Cool. Yes, exactly. Uh, Ajit, you can do a curves and levels. Um, you have more channel options when it comes to curves, okay? Um, when, it, when you're dealing with like straight brightness, contrast type things, you could use levels. So it kind of goes brightness, contrast, Levels are a step up, and then curves, especially if you're dealing with manipulating the color. I just wanted to make the eyes brighter, so I didn't need to get that other, uh, all those other layers involved. Ha, funny. All right. 
Sweet, let's do this. Okay, so, got that done. I'm gonna take this to the next level. You ready for this? I think this is looking pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna show you something else. Check this out. I'm gonna take all these layers and I'm gonna convert them to a smart object, right? Just do a command, or excuse me, click on one, hold the shift key, click on the top one, convert to smart object. Everything's gonna be in one layer because I wanna do another global adjustment, all right? And this global adjustment is smoothing out my skin tone. There's other ways I could do it in the, in the filters menu, but what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna go into filter and I'm gonna use camera raw filter, right? And this is kind of where I'll end up, by the way. Camera raw filter actually has a lot of uh, touch-up features that are also in Photoshop. So camera raw filter, um, I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, but again, if any tool, if, if there was a magic button within Photoshop, this is it uh, right over here. Camera raw filter, there's that auto button, right? Check this out, click auto. I've already made some adjustments. That kind of made it worse, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you know why? Because we did such a good job manually manipulating everything, the auto didn't do that much. It kind of messed with my shadows and whites. Let's set it back to default. But I usually encourage people, if they're new to Photoshop, hit that auto button and uh, it'll try to balance out all of those various layers. But what we wanna do is we wanna play with texture right down here, right? That's all you need to do. You need to smooth out the skin. Just take down that texture slightly, right? See how it's smoothing me out like so, just like that. Let's zoom in and get a better idea. Smoothing out the skin, but keeping the detail in there, right? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, if there are any spots that I need to clean up, I could do that. Use spot removal tool in, in good old camera raw. It does the same thing, but it points to where you're sampling from. So it says, hey, I'm gonna take from here and put it there, okay? You can hit J to hide those and you can do additional cleanup if you want to as well, right? Just like that. Might look like I have more of a mustache right here. I'm gonna hurry up and do this. You ready? Adjustment brush. Let's do this really fast. Kind of painting right over, kind of like where I have a mustache and I'm just increasing the exposure so I can lighten areas and darken areas. Right here, I'm just painting a couple times to kind of even out that tone uh, beneath me like that. Click OK. It's applying all that good stuff. Yes, exactly, Raseem. Too much uh, texture makes the skin look fake. Couldn't agree more, right? Another thing I wanna do is go into filter, liquify, cause did you guys notice, Tim, like, I have like one eye that's like smaller than the other and nobody's perfect. Everybody's eyes are a different sizes. Look, this, my left eye is always like a little bit smaller and and you're gonna notice that forever now that when I'm streaming. So liquify this option down here, face tool, clicking on that, rolling over the eye. And this is just a doing a little bit of adjustment, just opening up that eye, just a touch to make it a little bit more even. Cool. That's all I wanna do. I would say really be really conservative here. This is just a little minuscule update that I'm making, right? I could have been halfway through a blink or something. Who knows, but this is already looking better. Uh, last thing I wanna do, since I only have about a minute left, let's go ahead and have some fun right over here with this layer selected. This is in the brand new version of Photoshop. Uh, no, I don't wanna do that. I want to select subject, selected, select and mask, paint over the hair to put me on a new background. That is my last goal painting over that right down here. Since there's green in the background, we wanna decontaminate those colors and I'll get rid of the green in my hair. I'd spend more time on this if I wanted to. I could always go back in and change it, clicking okay. Now you can see I'm on white and I could use the new gradients panel and add, I don't know, some fun. Gradients in the background, something like that. Kinda of like these warm tones like that looks pretty good. Um, 
Fantastic. So I'd say this is looking pretty good. I could always clean up this mask a little bit better, um, but not to worry. I will do that later. I appreciate you guys. Have fun with it. I encourage you to make what you want. Get creative as soon as it's cut out. Post that to Discord and we'll review it tomorrow, but it's going to be really fun because we have a lot of cool things lined up for this week and next week. So thanks so much. Uh, for watching and show me what you make. Would love to see it. I'm so happy to be here. Hope you are too. Everybody have a great day. Stick around. We have Swoops in next. Stick around, guys. It's going to be awesome. Thanks.